Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. We're continuing our book review and reading of The Art of Power. It's been a great book. Let's just jump right in. We're on page 104. He had the best of editors in private. Self-evident was Benjamin Franklin. In sum, Jefferson's draft was a political undertaking with a philosophical frame. It was produced in a particular moment by a politician to satisfy particular concerns for a particular complex of audiences, undecided Americans, soldiers in arms, and potential global allies. He worked away in these summer days of 1776, dividing his time between writing in his quarters and executing congressional business. Congress ordered that the declaration be sent to the several assemblies, conventions, and committees, or councils of safety, councils of safety, and to the several commanding officers of the Continental Troops. Okay, that's interesting. So these officers are even going to read it. That it be proclaimed in each of the United States and at the head of the army. Wow, so they're going to let everyone know. It's going to be a document that's going to be widespread, essentially. Constituencies included readers in all of the colonies, especially in regions where opinion still tended against independence, and those in the armed service of the American cause. Hence, Jefferson included a lengthy list of charges against King George III, some of which were obscure, even to contemporaries. Ah, so he's just, li like, laying it all out. He knows his audience is gonna be very diverse, so he's gotta make this piece of his really potent. Jefferson's influence were manifold. Locke, we gotta read him. Montesquieu and the philosophers of the Scottish Enlightenment were among them, as was James Wilson's pamphlet, Considerations on the Nature and Extent of the Authority of the British Parliament, and George Mason's Declaration of Rights, written for the Virginia Constitution. Jefferson had consulted, too, with Franklin and Adams. The enclosed paper has been read, and with some small alterations, approved of by the committee. Jefferson wrote in a note to Franklin, whose gout and boils were keeping him confined to his lodgings. My grandpa has gout. It's very painful. Will Dr. Franklin be so good as to peruse it and suggest such alterations as his more enlarged view of the subject will dictate? So he wants Franklin to like go over it, give him suggestions. Jefferson spared nothing in his attacks on England and on George III, including harsh language condemning the slave trade despite his defeats on anti-slavery measures in Virginia, both in court and in the House of Burgess. Jefferson tried once more to lead an American institution, in this case, the Continental Congress, to a relatively progressive position on slavery. They did not want to let those slaves go, let me tell you. Yet he failed again. Adams long remembered the passages of Jefferson's. Here we go. A meeting we accordingly had, and coned the paper over. I was delighted with its high tone and flights of oratory with which it abounded, especially that concerning slavery, which, though I knew his southern brethren would never suffer to pass in Congress, I certainly never would oppose. So notice this, you know, the southerns, man, they really did not want to let slavery go. Sadly, today, people still fly that Confederate flag and pretend it means something that it doesn't. We reported it to the committee. We were all in haste. Congress was impatient, and the instrument was reported. As I believe, in Jefferson's handwriting, as he first drew it, Congress cut off about a quarter of it, as I expected they would, but they obliterated some of the best of it, and left all that was exceptionable, if anything in it was. Wow. So, overly, like, just... Editing just like chunks out of it out. It's that's hard to deal with as an author If you're a writer and you go through all the work of trying to create a really good piece and they're just like shredding it You're like dang man. You're like tearing up my baby The declaration was introduced on Friday June 28th 1776 and debate began on Monday July 1st as Adams remembered large passages were cut irritating Jefferson the pull synonymous idea that we had friends in England, worth keeping terms with, still haunted the minds of many. He said, For this reason, those passages which conveyed censures of the people of England were struck out, lest they should give them offense. 
So notice, so Jeffrey's like, there's people who still have friends worth keeping in England, right? So certain harshness against them had to be taken out so, so to appease them. Today, a good example of that would be people coming out against police brutality. There's people who are being apologists for it, right? And some people are not saying anything at all, not even on Facebook, because they don't want to lose their friends, right? They don't want their job to be impacted as, you know, for them sticking up for people who are being abused by police, which is sad. So when we read what Jefferson went through, you can totally understand his frustrations because it's like, man, we shouldn't be placating people who are supporting a system that needs to be changed, right? It's very interesting. The denunciation of slavery was so eliminated. The clause, too, reprobating the enslavement of inhabitants of the Africa was struck out. And the, yeah, it, it, I read that in my one of my old classes. There was a passage in there that specifically spoke about slavery, but the people in the South, they were like, man, we won't get them to be in the Union if we do that. Dark times. Dark times. In complacence to South Carolina and to Georgia, who had never attempted to restrain the importance of slaves. So Georgia and South Carolina love their slaves. Very sad, disgusting. And who, on the contrary, still wish to continue it, said Jefferson. Our northern brethren also, I believe, felt a little tender under those censures, for though their people have very few slaves themselves, yet they had been pretty considerable carriers of them to others. That's sad. He had tried anew on slavery and fallen short anew. His political instinct to fight only those battles he believed he could now win took even firmer hold. Indeed, but if you only fight the easy battles, how much glory is that? Sometimes the best fights are the ones that are the hardest. Jefferson hated being edited by such a large group. I know how he feels when I went to go to the writing lab and some tutor just alters everything and you're like, no, I just want you to check the punctuation and the MLA format. I don't really want you to change the words. He fairly writhed as he sat in the Pennsylvania State House, listening to member after member offering his thoughts, wanting to change this and cut that. Yeah, it's totally awful because your paper feels like your baby benjamin franklin had sufficiently conquered his gout to attend the session sympathetic about jefferson's evident distress franklin tried to soothe his young colleague to whom every suggestion and demand on the floor was a fresh agony as though each objection was directed not at the document but at jefferson himself right i think a lot of writers you can feel that way as Franklin told Jefferson, I have made it a rule, whenever in my power, to avoid becoming the draftsman of papers to be reviewed by a public body. Yet for all his momentary discomfort, Jefferson exercised an extraordinary measure of power by taking on drafting duties. However, many changes came in. It was still his voice at the core of the enterprise. Yeah, when people change your... I had one really annoying teacher once who... Every time I asked him, can you see my voice in my paper, he'd never answer it. And he would just, ugh, I know how he, I just, without saying too much, I know how this feels. And the author of the document saw his words as sacred. Describing the desk on which he wrote the declaration, Jefferson later said, Politics, as well as religion, has its superstitions. These gaining strength with time may one day give imaginary value to this relic for its association with the birth of the great charter of our independence the great charter of our independence yeah it'd be interesting i don't know if they still have that in a museum or if it still survives uh but that would be interesting i mean little historic things like that are pretty nerdy like the liberty bell still around and stuff like that pennsylvania state house south carolina and georgia Locke, Montesquieu, philosophers of the Scottish Enlightenment, helping him. Benjamin Franklin doing his thing. Continental Congress. Declaration introduced on June 28, 1776. <laughs> Friends worth keeping. Very interesting. What a great read. Hope you learned something, family. Hope you learned something.